This is Kyle Galaz with Poor to Pro Car Sales Training Podcast. Become a sales titan. I am here with an absolute sales beast named Frank Beard. Frank is one of these type of guys that loves his product. He loves Honda, as you can see from his attire here. And he is a, a, a true, I say a sales beast because the numbers he tells me that, that he's selling over 200 a year tells me that that he's a he's on his way to becoming something very, very special. And he already is. But where I find Frank very fascinating is a guy that has all this talent, all this uh, sales skill, makes all this kind of money, still looking to get better. And um, kudos to you, Frank, for not only listening to the podcast and, and messaging me random here here and there, but but actually spending resources to do a one-on-one session to go to the next level. So Frank, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little about yourself, how you got in the car business and where you work. Well, I'm Frank Beard. I work at Larry Miller Honda in Boise, Idaho. Um, so I was doing sales for a long time, but I was just doing cell phones. Um, I actually started in 2003 for Singular Wireless and went all the way up till 2020 in the industry, only missing one phone launch the entire span of from the Nokia little phones to the smartphones we have. And in 2020, um, commission was basically wiped out because goals weren't adjusted to deal with lockdowns and everything else that was going on. Um, So that stuff was at a real effect on me. And I basically stopped seeing commission checks. So I was only getting the hourly that you get in the cell phone world. So um, knowing only sales my whole life, even though cell phone sales is dramatically different. um, I've been through, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sales meetings. I all of that building rapport and everything has been soaked into my DNA. Uh, And I've always genuinely loved Honda. So I ended up leaving um, Verizon and uh, ended up door dashing for a little while. And it wasn't quite working out. Um, and I was passing the big blue Honda sign and I left a voicemail on what I later found out was the general manager's phone. And um, I told him I'm not a car salesman, but I only know how to sell. And I absolutely love Honda. So I think it might work out. And that was it. I never applied at any other dealerships. I walked in and the first thing I did was take a selfie in Honda gear. (laughs) Straight up. Well, you know know what, when you, when you said that you uh, you've been in sales before and, and selling cars was different than cell phones, you know, what's the same between selling uh, cell phones and selling cars. You know what the same thing is? What is it? People. Yeah. hundred percent. It's people. It, yep. We're in the we're in the people game, man. Not it. Whatever product you're selling, it doesn't matter. You know this. You could sell yeah. ketchup. You could sell cell phones. You could sell cars. We're in the people business, and we and when you figure out people, then you can do what you did. You have no car experience. You go into a place and you destroy it, and you set records every month. Yeah. So yeah, great job. Was unexpected. I figured I would do okay, but I was a little concerned because of pre preconceived notions of the business so well the your little tagline that you have for your name on instagram the my honda guy is is yeah. very catchy it's in yeah. i remember it right i don't remember everyone's taglines and their names yeah i remember yours but what what's interesting about you frank is you pound the instagram and whatever social media you use to where i want a honda because you do it <laughs> enough <laughs> right. You post you post the Honda meets, you post new products. You, yeah. You're posting Honda, old Hondas with with uh, what was his name? <laughs> Notorious B.I.G. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're always <laughs> posting Honda stuff. And, and here I am finding myself on your website or not not your website, but Honda's website building stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because of how much that's how that's marketing cool. works. So you do a good job. And I know that's one of your strengths is marketing yourself. So keep that up. But today we're going to be working on stuff that you feel like that you need help with. I hate using the word weakness, but it's something that we need to work on. We all have, you know, three or four categories that if we could just get better with these things, we would sell more cars. 100%. And imagine Frank Beard going to the next level. How, how many cars is that? I know your goal was 300 this year and you're going to get close. I'm still going to come visit you in Boise when I drive through next. All right. That sounds good. I, I I'll come stop to... by. Uh, 26 and a half to go to hit the 250 mark. So um, I'm 
getting there, man. <laughs> well, Nick, there's only there's only a couple guys that I'm in contact with on a regular basis that in, come in, near your numbers. They're in the twos, but I think you got them beat. So great job, Frank. Okay, so your first one was um, follow up. You find that follow up is is something that you struggle with. Tell me about that a little bit. What do you struggle with when it comes to follow up? Well, there's two variations of it, and I struggle with both of them. Um, one is uh, I'm really good at finding my own deals, and sometimes I'll go a little overboard, send out um, a myriad of, uh, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 messages, and I might get 40 responses to which I can usually keep that going. Um, and of those 40, maybe 20 are a little curious. 10 are kind of serious and um, I'll find myself really doing a good job of following up with four to, to 10 of them. So, um, and then I just see these, I mean, I'll even have them message me again and have to come up with some kind of, I know I'm not doing a very good job if I have to tell them why, why I didn't follow up with them. And, and I feel like a few times a day, I'm explaining to somebody why I didn't follow up with them. Even when I've already sold them, I feel like my follow-up is kind of weak. Um, and then there's also the follow, it, it, I kind of could segue into that. That's the second follow-up that I feel like I struggle with is just following up with old customers, keeping in contact with them. I also put the, uh, the notes thing, I, the whole picture. I feel like um, I'm now somewhere near, just shy of 500 cars sold. And, um, and I probably have, you know, two handfuls full of solid customers that I'm keeping a relationship with. Right. Well, if it makes you feel any better, better, every salesman struggles with follow-up because when you got in the car business, they never talked about follow-up. All they talked about was go sell a car. This is how you sell a car, right? This is how you get a customer in the showroom, the steps of the sale. No one ever said, okay, Hey, now that we've showed you how to sell a car, Frank, now let's show you how to do a proper follow-up. That's never part yeah. of our training regimen, okay? Right. There's certain things that we're never taught in the car business that we have to figure out on our own, and I'm going to help you figure that out. But you said a couple of key words, and one of them is relationship. So the notion of follow-up, you got to throw it out the window. If, if you're doing follow-up, it's too late. It's already yeah. too late, right? Doesn't that make sense? Because yeah. now you're calling them. Hey, Mike, this is uh, Frank Beard at the Honda store. And it's been three months since you last talked with him, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to be like, okay, what do you want? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and if it's someone you sold, now you're a little bit scared to call him because you're going to get the, I'm having problems with my car. Right. So that that makes us shy away from doing follow-up to sold customers because those two bad eggs that have problems with their cars stop us from calling all those other people that love their cars. Right, okay? right. So, so we're going to break down follow-up in a few segments here. First, I have it written down. No more follow-up, okay? No more of this awkward phone call that you don't know what's going to be on the other line. You don't know if they hate their car. They, you don't know if they love their car. They, you don't even know if they traded it in or not. Right. That's, shame on, that's shame on me as a salesperson for not keeping a relationship with them. Okay. So instead of doing quote-unquote follow-up, what you have to do is have an active relationship with every one of these customers, because if you, if you first truly care about them, right. If you really care about your customers deep down, you'd want to do follow-up. Okay. Like this this one-on-one, for instance, after this one-on-one's done, do you think I'm just going to be like, well, I hope Frank succeeds and (laughs) and never, and, and, you know, and delete you off my Instagram and block. (laughs) No, man, my job as a sales trainer is to check up on my guys that have done these one-on-ones and, and see how they are doing me and you have active follow-up and we've never even done this yet. Yeah. So, so just imagine our relationship going forward, Frank, I'm going to come see you at your Boise store the next time I'm through Boise, our relationship's <laughs> only going to get stronger. So no different to when you, when you sell a car, let's use sold customers as an, as an instance. Okay. You, you said you sold 500 cars, right? Right. In your couple, couple years there. So, but you only have a couple handfuls of, of customers that you could call and be like, Hey, Mike, how you doing? Oh, what's up, Frank? Yeah. Right. You just have a little bit of those, but yeah. you should have, you should have maybe half of those people. But um, again, we're not, we're not taught that when we first get in the carbons, we have to figure it yeah. out. So you got to break it down into a mathematical equation. 
Okay, you almost have to get a little nerdy with follow up or not follow up, but an active relationship. Okay, yeah. so what 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 salesmen will do when they do follow up is it, it, the underlying th- reason why they're calling is to try to get a car sale. Okay, you're not re- salesmen don't call a customer after six months just to check on Say, them. Yeah, you know. Sure there's an underlying reason why salesmen are calling the, a customer after a year. It's to try to get another sale. Yeah. Well, guess what? Customers are are so smart nowadays and they can see the snake in the grass, right? They know yeah. that, okay, what's the small talk about? No, I'm not in the, in the mood to buy a car. I'm not buying a car. Okay. And then you, and then you get this horrible response. You hang up the phone. You're like, I hate follow-up. I hate it. Yeah. But imagine if, imagine if the whole year, you and, and that customer have been doing what me and you have been doing. Yeah. Texting, messaging, liking yeah. each other's posts. So when, when a car, the car business type stuff comes up, the car business need talk comes up. Yeah. We've had so many good conversations that have nothing to do with the car business that I, that you and I would allow each other to talk business now because right. we have an active relationship. Now I can ask Frank, Hey, why don't we do a one-on-one yet? I can talk to you like that. Right. Oh man, you know what? You're right. Let's do one. Yeah. Okay. But I can't ask for the sale and and, and try to get revenue out of a, a a customer unless I have had an active relationship. You know, I actually have a like to use what you're using as an example. I have a very good um, example of this that just happened today at six o'clock. I'm not going to name any names. I had a marketer that I, that had reached out to me cold on um instagram and i kind of looked into them a little bit and it's all about promoting myself and how to pay facebook for promotion etc but uh, this guy reached out to me cold about setting up something similar to this um which was just a consult of what he can do for me and my brand and he he reached out to me cold he asked for this like you know basically he was gonna pitch me we had no relationship whatsoever. And when we got on this call, it felt very unnatural. And quickly, I realized I was being sold. So if I can apply that to the customer that I'm calling cold or out of nowhere, it probably doesn't remember what my face looks like. Now we're talking, Frank. 100%. Yeah, it's, there's nothing there. It, 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 because when I was talking to this guy, I promise you, man, that what we've got going right now is so much more natural. He was talking and I couldn't wait to just get off of this because I knew he was leading me down a path that led to what is your credit card number or which is the exact same thing as me leading down a path that's asking, you know, what are they driving and how's that going? Um, They know I'm trying to get somewhere with it. So it makes perfect sense. So now, now think about how you felt when this guy was trying to pitch you, right? You wanted to get out the phone as fast as possible. Yeah, you know, on a video get... call too. On a video call, so you can't even yeah. like my body language was messed up. Like, like I was doing yeah. the thing you do when you're trying to leave the room. You know, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But my Wi-Fi <laughs> is tweaking out, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so now you know how your customers feel when you call after a year, or after three months, or after six months. Remember that. So, yeah. so you have to have <clears throat> you have to have the active relationship. And, and you can't do follow up. Follow up is is a is a word we use for checking in every once in a while. And that's literally uh, like the first few words out of my mouth. I'm literally, it's Frank. I'm just calling to check in on you guys, see how it's going. And I guarantee, be it hearing this from you, I can picture how much gas that sounds like. Now, when I have the relationship where I know them and I can be like, "How's Maggie doing? She's still loving the Ridge Line," and blah 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 blah. Like where I can talk about their animal. Maggie was a dog of a customer of mine or something like that. And I've had, literally sent them cards and things like that. These guys are real easy for me to get on the phone with. Okay. So you know the difference between follow up without a relationship and follow up with an active relationship. So mm-hmm. what I was talking about with the mathematical equation is this. If you sell 15 cars in, in October, okay, yeah. in November, you need to send 60 text messages to those 50 people, 15 people for every okay. car you sell, you need to sell, you need to send four text messages the next month, first okay. week, second week, third week, fourth week. Yeah. Is it work? Yeah. But how long does it take Frank to send 20 text messages? Yeah, no, that's nothing. There's it no, real nothing, right. 
and I get to the dealership an hour before we open, so I got the time. You you can hammer it out, and you if I don't know what kind of phone you have, but a lot of times you can hook up a freaking keyboard to your phone, and blah, 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 bam, yeah. but or or copy and paste, or or do a laptop, you know, yeah, and just have their numbers, boom, 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 and hammer it out. But so the mathematical equation is, if I sell fifteen in October, then I need to send sixty text messages. Now you said you sold five hundred cars in um, the last two years. I'm gonna round it up to six hundred because I have six hundred here because I figured you might be around six hundred. Okay, I was close. I was close. Yeah. So if you sold 600 cars, that would be 7,200 text messages for for all those cars you sold. And, and if you divide that by 12 months, you'd have to send 600 text messages a month to yeah. keep an active relationship with these customers. Yeah. If you if you sold 600 cars, now 600 divided by 30 days is 20 text messages a day to keep an active relationship with. 600 people right so you mean you mean to tell me i can keep an active good strong relationship with my customers and i only need to send 20 text messages a day done that's easy yeah. right that's that's the hour that you're there early yeah but but here's what you don't want to do you need to do 90 percent of your text messages are about them and non-car business yeah they know what you do already Right. You don't you don't got to remind them, but you need to have an active relationship that has to do with them, their family, their city events. Hey, did you go to the the concert last week that was at the Boise, whatever? Did you go to the college football game? Right. You know, these things. Now, can you copy and paste that and do them all? Yeah. Just don't mess up the names. They, <laughs> they, right. They don't know that you're sending. Hey, did you go to the college football game? last night and catch the game yeah. they don't know you sent that to 600 people right, right. okay but they feel man frank's not just a normal car salesman because i promise you no one in your dealership and nobody in your city is doing what i'm telling you to do right now and yes it is a lot of work but would you rather be um hoping and praying on the lot that a yeah. customer comes in no you, you ever heard of a guy named joe verdi uh no He's an old school car sales guy that trained and he used old tactics and, and, and some of the stuff I, I still use to this day, but he's a, he's an old school car sales trainer from the eighties and nineties. But one of the things he said was the hope system. I hope to sell a car today. I hope yeah. to, to get a customer today. I hope to, you know, don't go to work with the hope system, go to work with a plan. I'm, I'm sending 20 text messages today with all my sold customers I'm going to send 20 more to people that didn't buy this week and, and try to just, you know, keep an active relationship. Cause eventually that no, that day is going to turn into a yes. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. So, so what, what I, the, the best thing I can get to you out of follow-up is don't do follow-up. Follow-up yeah. is called checking in. Right. Don't check in because they know what you're doing They're You're trying to sell them a car. Okay. Right. And, and here's the thing with like customer heat, for instance, when you make that follow-up call after three months and you just hear an earful of why they hate their car, it's the worst phone call. Both of you guys end up hanging up the phone mad at each other. Oh, if they hate okay. their car, it's just time to trade it in. Yeah, we'll <laughs> put a twist on it, right? But let's say you had an active text message thread with those people. You would have known after, th after week three as a good proper salesman doing because you really care about that customer that they started having issues with their an yeah. exhaust leak on a Hemi truck or, you know, whatever, then you could jump in and be a hero and say, Hey, let me get you with my service manager. This doesn't normally happen after three weeks of buying a brand new car, you know, whatever you got to say. And now you go from calling in three months and being a, you know, a guy that's just bugging them to, to their hero, man. Yeah. Frank took care of it. Boom, boom. He made the calls, got me the sales or the service manager. Boom. That go see that guy. Okay. So you, you can use me and you as an example. And that guy that tried selling you on a training. Yeah. Th that is the, probably the perfect thing that goes exactly with what we're talking about right now. The active relationship gets the customer. I can okay. even think of a way that I got him off the phone, bro. I mean, I told him, I, 
that my 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 assets were froze or something. You know what I mean? Like I totally gassed him. <laughs> hey, buyers are liars, right? We I totally I totally gassed him, which is exactly what they're doing. They're literally in a lithium dealer just sitting there <laughs> going, sorry man, we're not buying a car. Click. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. So you kind of get the point and, and kind of have something to work on for follow-up. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go with that. It, it seems extreme, but um, when, when in the big numbers, but when you break it down and you really think about what those results will yield um, and that's what I'm looking for. I I'm at a certain level, but I want to be a, a, another place. And uh, that's a practical thing that can be done to get me there. Cause I know that'll yield yeah. results. Well, 20 text message is not, is not bad. It's, it's no. probably an hour's worth of work, but, but look at the guys like, um, you ever follow Mark, Mark Wahlberg's work ethic? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I seen the show. Okay. Yeah, I you ever, what if, you know, the rock, right? Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any movies that guy has done in TV shows and wrestling? I mean, if you think sending 20 text messages a day is hard work, dude, we, yeah. I don't think me and you even know what hard work is. No, these these guys are up at three o'clock, man. <laughs> They're up at three exactly. o'clock working out. I, I'm going to bed at three o'clock, and I didn't work out that whole day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you say, "Hey, it, it's a lot to take on," yeah. it, it is because it's new to you. Yeah. But but when you start creating those work habits, where it's like, "Hey, I'm I'm at the dealership an hour early. I got my giant coffee that my beautiful wife made me, and she went to the very top of it so I could <laughs> spill it right." That's yeah, what your yeah. wife did for you. And now yeah. I'm here to bust my butt and and, and let's do this. Brrrah, boom. And you just yeah. feel like, uh, you know, you feel like a rock star. And then yeah. and then all all your other guys get to work at, at whatever time they get there at eight. You've been there since seven and you've already contacted all these people. Yeah. That's how you become the best of the best is you do stuff the others aren't willing to do. Okay? I 100% know that. Good. And, and I can tell you know that because you're, you're killing it over there at, at the Honda store. Who would have ever thought a Honda salesman could sell almost 250 cars in a, in a year, you know, it, in a state, in an area that has snow? It, you know, it's not like every Civic is, they're not all wheel drive. No, they're not. So good job, but they're almost Frank. as good. <laughs> there you go. I know Hondas are amazing. Okay. So we got follow up taken care of. Um, okay. The next thing you talked about was, was taking good notes. Tell me, tell me about that. Um, well, it, it's going to go, it'll kind of bleed into follow up, obviously. Um, and, and I think that uh, you'll be able to apply a lot of what you just said to it, because it's actually really, it's a simple thing. But it is, um, it's, it's so important. And I don't do it well. That's the bottom line. Like I, when, when I thought about what I would want, from training, there is a lot that I do feel like I do very well. I can always get better, sharpen those skills, but I definitely understand it in, at its core. Um, notes are something that I do understand and I understand their value. I'm just not very good at taking, at, at, at doing proper note taking. Um, and I have a whole bunch of coworkers who are better. And I do know that uh, I've cost myself a lot of money at this point in my customer base by popping somebody up. And I can't even tell if that was reassigned to me because somebody else left and it's empty. It's a, it's a, you know, um, what do you call it? They're a abandoned or an orphan customer. Yeah. I can't tell if they're an orphan customer or if I, if I actually sold them that car <laughs> when I look right. them up in my customer base. So, there's a few ways to do this because I, I know people, I know people like you. Okay. And the Frank Beard type of guy is a fast pace. He's got nine things on his mind and he doesn't slow down until his body says, Hey, you got to chill out. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, that's you're, on, you, you're on the go. I, I can see it in your eyes that you're on the go, right? You're always thinking about the next thing. Okay. I got this podcast to do with Kyle and then I got this to do and I'm going to, do some gaming tonight before I have to go to bed. I like, I can read, I can read it a little bit, maybe not perfect. But no, you're a you guy that's on, got me dialed. Yeah. You're, you're on the go. So guys like that have struggles with, with taking notes and remembering things because a lot of stuff goes boom, 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 boom through their brain. And what captures is the stuff that can make them money. Oh, 
that stuck like a fishnet, yeah. right? All the debris goes through and then the fish gets stuck. Right. The, the fish is the money. Okay. Yeah. Or, or the fish or the, the net, you know what I mean? It, it's yeah. you're a fast paced kind of guy, but the fast paced kind of guy also sells 250 cars in a year. So yeah. you have to, you have to be okay with the only guy that was ever perfect was Jesus. Yeah. Okay? So you're, you're going to have some flaws and recognizing them is step one, which you've done. You've recognized that I have a, an issue with taking notes. And, and so good. Step one is taken care of. Now, step two is what can you do to better that? I don't think a little notepad and writing down stuff is going to help you because, because no. you're going to misplace the notepad. The notepad. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll forget where the notepad's at. You're going to be like, where did I put that notepad? <laughs> or, and I end up with four of them that are about four pages deep each. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next thing you know, your kid's drawn on one of them and you're like, what's that? Oh, that was mine. Yeah. Okay. So, so you have to be okay with Frank is not a perfect human being. Okay. So what you have to do and what I, I could, what could help you with note taking is you need to slow down a little bit and think about caring about that customer. Remember, it's not just the Frank show. Yes. You, it's about you making the money, but if right. you want to have a long career that, that is going upward trajectory, you got to yeah. slow down and really care about your customers and, and listen to them and maybe jot down something while you're helping them. And, and does your CRM system have a ability to put notes? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm majorly referring to is going through there and um, how much uh, guesswork I have to do. Okay, so, so we're going to change the game up a little bit because what most sales salespeople do is, all right, guys, thanks for buying the car. Okay, yeah, if you guys need anything, remember, here's my card. Okay, thanks. And then you're like, you get your voucher and you're like, all right, I did good. Okay, I'm going to mark my name on the board. I got another unit. And then you're like, oh, let me get to my computer. Sold customer. Frank Beard on this date on, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wife's name was Cheryl. She's not on the deal. So I don't really know that. Uh, the kid went to high school at da, 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 da. Right. So right. You, you do all the stuff and then you try to remember the, the, the little things that could help you. What you need to do is something cheesy. Watch this. I'm going to get a pen. Okay. Because cheesy seems to work a lot. Okay. Frank, my name's Kyle. You know that. We've, I've been selling you a car. I'm really bad, and I'm trying to get better at remembering things about my customers because you're very, Frank, you're very important to me. And I know we're waiting to go to finance. we got everything approved, but I'm going to put some notes in my system. So if, if, if it ever comes up that a birthday pops up or, or you know, something, I want to be able to remember you like just like right now. Okay, right. Frank, do you have any pets? <laughs> yes, I do. I have a cat named Johnny. Yeah, cat Cat named Johnny. Johnny? Yeah. How many kids do you got, Frank? Five. (laughs) You got five kids? Yeah, bro. I think I sell 200 cars. (laughs) You're my hero, man. I love kids. Okay, and what's your wife's name? Gabrielle. Gabrielle, okay. I know I spell that very good. What are your kids' names? You don't have to tell me them, but let's just say I write them down, right? Right. And I'm, but I'm doing this right now. I'm doing this actively. Yeah. Is it is it awkward for you to do it the first time? Yeah. Is it awkward for me right now? No. I, I this doesn't bother me. Right. Because I'm not afraid to 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 get notes now. And now the customers in front of me while we're waiting for finance, and I got my delivery checklist. I'm doing and I'm typing in da 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 da. And the customer's like, this this guy's different. I'm like, yeah. yeah. But guess what? I'm going to send you a birthday card on your birthday because I care about my customers. And da, 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 da. What's your wife's birthday? Right. I mean, yeah. you don't have to you don't have to get the all the kids names, but I get but the you're, gist. you're getting the gist of you're you're including the customer. You're showing the customer that you care because remember, this is a show. Yeah. The Barnum Bailey Circus, the greatest show on earth. There's a reason why they're the number one is because they put on a show. Well, Frank needs to put on a show and you need to take notes now. Yeah. Get not notes now, because well, you're not going to remember, and, and I can't, I can't find out. You know, from your Instagram on your car page, I don't know that you got five kids. Yeah, and no one's going to say, "Hey, my name's Frank. Yeah, thanks for selling me this car. By the way, I got five kids." Yeah, <laughs> put put that in your notes, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no customer is going to voluntarily tell you stuff. Hey, Frank, what, by the way, what is your favorite Honda? Uh, the Type R. Type R. What is What year was that, Type R? The, my favorite Type R year is 2023. Okay. Did you ever like the S2000? I'm just wondering. I did. I just don't fit in one. Ah, you're too big. What are you saying? Not even kind of. I stare at the pillar. Six five. You're six five. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Six. Right. It, so as a as Kyle Galaz, is the podcast guy, right? Porter Pro podcast guy. I have no embarrassment about asking this. Yeah. Do, do you know that you're my customer right now, Frank? A hundred percent. And you were okay with giving me some of this information? Absolutely. So do and you I can also see many ways to have fun with that. Yeah, there's there's cool stuff you can do with this. What if I sent you a Hot Wheel of that car in the mail? Yeah. I mean, come man, on, man. You need my address or what? <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> right? So <laughs> I'll come bring it if I ever go to Boise. But so so I'm not embarrassed to do this with my customer, Frank Beard. Don't be embarrassed to do it with your customer. And you can have fun with your customer. Yeah. But that is how you can get notes on your customer and then remember if they're yours or not. Right. Okay? That is a way to get better. Yeah, it's cheesy, it's funny, it's goofy, but guess what? It works. Well, first of all, I am cheesy and goofy, so I I can log that to memory. And the other thing is that you said, the key um, that I hear from basically all of my upper management on a consistent basis is to slow down. Now, believe it or not, um, even though I am very uh, wired, um, I actually move pretty slowly at the dealership, but, but I, I need to sit down, slow down. And I do, I sit and I have those conversations when I lean back in my chair and I just flow and I could be doing this while I'm typing in some notes. They don't even, they're not going to know I'm taking notes. I didn't even, I mean, yeah. I could do just what you're saying, but I could also, I spark conversation very well. And I just haven't been but, doing while I'm, I'm definitely, I've always mentally thought to do it after they left. Mm -hmm. Now, question, Frank. Do you feel important when I did this? Yeah. Okay, so don't do it while they don't know. Okay, I like that. You, you got to do it because then they feel important. Why does Frank care about me so much? Well, right? people love to talk about themselves, bro. I love when you ask me questions. Exactly. <laughs> right? So Everyone makes perfect sense. Hey, do you know one of the sweetest words in the in the English language? No. The what it when I say this word, it's guaranteed to make you smile. Are you ready? Uh oh. Yeah. I'm already smiling. Frank. Frank. <laughs> yeah, it does. Huh? Okay. Frank. That's fantastic. People oh. love hearing their name. So don't 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 do what you just said you're gonna do. That's that's a bad way to do it. Okay. So yeah, so da 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 da, and you, they don't know what you're doing. Yeah, make make everything a show. Be an actor. The I greatest like actors get get paid the highest. All right. So your favorite car is a 2023 Type R. I'm gonna have to Google that. That might be my favorite car. Is that a four <laughs> banger turbo? What it, kind of motor? Oh yeah, you gonna right? love it. You gonna love it. That's a damn. How much is it? Machine. That thing's forty uh, grand, isn't it? It okay. So Kyle, it should be forty grand. <laughs> But, 50. you know, if you're in L.A., it's 70. <laughs> 70? Woo-hoo! And that's not if even If you go race through me, Honda, it's about huh? 50. If you, go, if you go to L.A., it's 70, okay? <laughs> and then and there's that Honda there's that Honda Civic that's like 89 grand, that race car one, track only. Yeah. Hey, you seen it. Oh, Come on, okay. dude. All I'm right. in the car business. Hey, I signed up to be able to buy one. Did you? Yeah, with HP. They, they didn't let me in, though. <laughs> ah. hey man it's about being obsessed and i'm obsessed with all brands so whatever whatever brand i can i can research it i you know i researched the T toyota sienna like two weeks ago really? i went on toyota's website and i only have two kids and they're all, one of them's almost out of the house i don't need a toyota sienna but i want to make sure i'm keeping up with all brands so i'm over there it. building a toyota sienna, all-wheel drive i don't sell toyotas I don't even have that in my my dealership's brands, but why yeah. do I do it? It's because I'm obsessed with the car business and I want to know everything I can that I can fit in this brain. Okay, so that's good for competition stuff. That's another category though. But hey, okay, I appreciate so, it. that's a good truth. 
I'm always trying to learn. And, and so are, so are you. So, um, when, when you said taking good notes, I was thinking like, like customer says their name and you forget it instantly. I do that too, but that's where a little notepad will come in handy because remember the, the rule, if you write their name down and say it a few times, you'll remember it. There's nothing worse than remembering their name after you get their driver's license for a test drive. Yeah. yeah. You've been calling them buddy the whole time. Pow. And, now, and then all of a sudden you're saying their name after you give them the life, they give you the license. Do you don't think they know what you just did? Yeah. They know. <laughs> I never thought about it, but yeah. Makes they sense. know all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're calling John after you get, got his license. Oh, Hey John. Yeah. Yeah. Here's your license back. What? I know what that guy did. He forgot my name. <laughs> <laughs> Customers are smart, man, because they're people. So that's where I would I would bring a, the little Walmart notepad. I got three for 99 cents, and I always had it in my bo- back pocket because, remember, the greatest show on earth. And when someone would say their name, I'd pull that sucker out and be like, Frank, awesome, nice to meet you. I always write it down because I don't want to forget your name because guess what? You guys are very important to me. Who's your wife? Is this your wife? Okay, Samantha. And I, I would literally write it down. Because it, what it did for me is, I first I remember their name. Yeah. Second, it showed them that I cared about them enough to write their name down. Okay. Oh. It, it, it's I know it's uh it, it, this one is definitely awkward and cheesy. It's no, it, it totally makes, is. It makes sense. We had a guy shop us the other day, who uh, went to eight different dealerships. Um, at least this is what he said in the same day. And that the entire he was in sales himself, and the entire time he was there, he was um, basically timing how long they kept him. So if you slow down and you're taking their name and stuff, he's going to be hooked. He was being basically blown off because he was asking about cars he knew were not available because they were too new and they're on back order and whatever. And he said the fastest one, he was in the building for only four minutes, even though he's looking to buy a car. And so you, what you're saying, I mean, just pulling out the thing and starting to take the notes and get that involved, you would, you would have passed this guy's test. Yeah. Because you know, people are not, um, they're not, yeah, that, that, I mean, that just makes perfect sense. You got a little notepad and you're, and they're going to be able to see, hey, this guy would have seen, dang, okay, this guy's on his stuff. He, he wants to know who I am. He plans on having me here for a minute. Yep. So, and, and it shows you care again. Cause, cause what are we without our customers really? Bro. <laughs> we're not we're not we're not sales people we're not you can't yeah. sell something without a customer we're just we're, lot attendants we're just lot watchers we just go to the kia <laughs> yeah so, so we just get nice looking and nice smelling and go and hang around no man we're here to we're here to uh, this is something i say in my sales meetings to all my guys we're here to serve but we're not servants i'm not right. anybody's whipping boy no one's going to tell me what to do hey go get the keys for that no well, i'll get yeah. them eventually but yeah. first I'm going to meet, I'm going to meet and greet you. I'm going to do my process because I know if I just get the key and shortcut the whole process of the meet and greet, then yeah. I've already lost you. Yeah. Now I'm your whipping boy. I'm here to serve my customers, but I'm not a servant. Okay. Yeah. So when you get customers in and you write their names down, have you ever heard my podcast where I talk about the waitress that comes up with no notepad? Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. going to mess up someone's order. She guaranteed. And she freaks me out the whole time. The, the whole, whole time, time you're like, like well, what are you doing? And then she comes exactly. back, she comes back with some, with Sprite instead of Coke, and you're like, like I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so so now you're in the new car business, okay? New car customers, especially Honda customers, are comparing to different brands out there. Okay, they're not just they're not just gonna come in and lay down for a Civic when they can go look at the new Kia, they can go look at the Hyundai, they can go look at the Toyota, they can go look at the new Volkswagen. There's different options. But the right. guy that does this and is writing yeah. down what they need, you're looking for 40 MPG or more. Okay, I just wanna I don't want to mess nothing up for you. I want to find you the perfect vehicle. That's the yeah. guy that's gonna get the sale, the guy that truly cares. Cause remember, 20% of the sale is the product, 80% is the guy, the, the sales that. guy. Man. Yeah. It's all about the sales guy. So taking notes in front of the customer in a little notepad and writing down their names is just like the waitress coming to get your order. Oh, Frank, this is your beautiful family. Okay, you got five kids. What do you guys want? Okay, I'm not messing that one up. Okay, yeah. oh, you look you look tough. I ain't messing up your order. The kids yeah. are laughing. You feel good. And, and uh, Gabrielle, what are you having? Oh, medium rare? Okay. 
Now, do you want the sauce on the side or on top? I prefer on the side, but oh, on the side. Okay, perfect. And and Frank, what did you want to drink? Oh, cranberry and vodka. Very nice. Nice choice. Yeah, right? Good. Yeah. That that waitress, is she going to get a bigger tip? Uh, absolutely. And, and they almost don't exist anymore. Okay. Is that <laughs> when you go back to that restaurant, are you going to want that waitress again? Yes, sir. You getting the call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're still there. The screen went a little black. Okay. So you can see how notes on a pad means a lot to a customer. Okay. Because it means yeah. a lot to you as a customer when you're at a restaurant. Okay. And also taking notes when you're at the, the desk and you're waiting for finance and you want to make sure you don't forget this customer. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. He loves the type R 2023. His name's Gabrielle. He's got five kids. He's got a cat named, hold up. <laughs> cat named Johnny. <laughs> he loves video games. He likes cranberry and vodka. He, he, yeah. he loves the Honda brand. He got, he got hired um, at the Honda store. He didn't, he didn't go to any other dealership. He used to sell cell phones. Yeah. Right. But they right. stopped doing commission. Do, do you yeah. need me to keep going, Frank? No, I see. Yeah. Come so on, notes man. Be pretty easy. Take those notes, write down the basic stuff. And when you're at the desk with the customer, take down the stuff that will make them feel better in the future. Okay. I like it. Boom. Now the slow down part, your manager is telling you to slow down. Okay. Be careful with slowing down too much. Yeah. Because there's something that makes Frank, Frank. Yeah. So don't change nothing that, that Frank is doing. Just be more attentive to, to those moments, those precious moments where you can gather that information, uh, yeah. those precious moments where you can do your paperwork correctly, not, not miss the insurance card or the driver's license, or it's, it's an ID card and not a driver's license. That's what they yeah. mean to slow down. They don't mean to slow down the Frank that makes Frank. Yeah. Slow yeah, down I get the it. details. Okay? Yeah, they don't like me when I'm, when I, when I'm off, you know. When I'm slow, when I'm slow like that, they, everybody, are you okay? Are you okay? Because I'm blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like this type of salesman. I like you because you've got all the energy it takes to be a, a, a top dog, right? right? You just have to refine some things. That's all. Yeah. And you'll be a three 300 car a year guy. That's what I need to get. Three, if you hit 300, man, <laughs> woo, be amazing. That's what I need to get. Okay, so... Um, another thing when, when you're taking good notes is active listening. Remember, we got one of these and two of these. They Customers don't really care about the barbecue you bought. Right. They That's don't facts. care about the, the, the roof you just put on your house. They don't care about that. Right. They want, they want your mouth to ask the question and they get to talk. It's their time to show off. Let them show off. Okay. I like that. And be an active listener. Okay. So let me make sure. Oh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to bring up. OK, so remember I was talking about you wanted something 40 MPG. Um, you wanted a, a four door sedan, front wheel drive, you know, and all those things I wrote down. Mm -hmm. This also can help close your deal, because what happens when you're at the desk and you got this in your back pocket and they're like, well, we want to take a look around and see, you know, find exactly what you want. Then you can go do what I did. Well, you want to go look around. OK, hold on one second. And you get this notepad out and say, well, when you came in, I just want to make sure I did the right thing because I don't want to mess anything up for you in buying a car because it's a special moment. You wanted something that was 40 MPG. Let's see. The Civic gets how much? Yeah, uh, 40. 40, okay. Yeah. You wanted something that was four-door. Is, is the Civic four-door that you're showing me? Yeah. I'm showing you? And you wanted something that had an Apple CarPlay. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, front wheel drive you said was fine you wanted four cylinders so you didn't want to have to do so much maintenance and you wanted to have a nice size trunk i showed you that a six foot five guy could get back in the trunk what <laughs> what did i miss what did i miss from what you told me yeah and dude you just slam it right back on them <laughs> it's a yeah. powerful thing when they want to go look around well we just want to weigh our options well, what other things did you want did you want it to have a, a squiggly antenna i'll go buy one right now for you yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll go bend it. And then they laugh <laughs> and then you can then you can attempt to close them again. Yep. So writing stuff down can help on the close side too. Okay. That's cool. But really what you're taking notes is those first two things we talked about. 
is okay. slowing down, getting their information, making them feel important, sending them that Hot Wheel in, in X amount of days. And the, do you still do that? Stay up with your car to the Hot Wheel? I haven't done it since last year. I kind of slowed down on it. I do still have Hot Wheels that I give kids, and I actually just ran out. Um, need to re-up on them, but I do. I, I give kids Hot Wheels when they come through. Okay, now, <laughs> now when I saw that, I thought, what a freaking genius. <laughs> I should probably Staples start is, doing... <laughs> You need to start doing it again. Small investment, big payoff, because guess what's going to happen? You're going to have a customer come in and say, yeah, I, I was talking to this guy's, um, I don't know, he's white. Uh, oh, he's the Hot Wheel guy. He's the Hot Wheels guy. Yeah. yeah. There's only one at the Honda store. Oh, that's yeah. Frank. Frank, your Hot Wheels just made you a deal. Yeah, that's, yep. Don't lose being special and unique, Frank. And that was very special and unique. And I and I thought that was really cool you did that. Okay, let's move on. Work in the service drive. Tell me about your struggles there. Uh it kind of it go it kind of similar to um it's similar to the note taking and the fact that I understand the importance of it. I see uh, incredible value in it. In fact, anybody that I see that's struggling on the sales floor um month to date or have a few bad months in a row i preach to them about going and doing this um and yet right. i just don't do it and and i think one big part of it is that i'm terrified of it <laughs> yeah it's terrifying yeah why is it terrifying do you think because it's the closest thing to knocking on a door and that's not something that i really enjoy i am good at building rapport closing people and finding deals but for some reason uh just just walking right up to somebody and uh taking a crack at nothing it freaks me out yep so i'll give you a quick little background when i first started at a ford store in bakersfield california i was uh, 23 and i told myself i'm going to be different than the other sales guys and no one works a service drive and the manager said hey no one works a service drive so i gave a crack at it but guess what the managers told me to do it. They didn't know how to do it. Right. So I'm back there floundering, treating these people like they're a fresh up. Yeah. They're not a fresh up. You can't go back there and talk to them about, oh, the new expedition that just came out and, oh, it's got the Eddie Bauer. They're like, what, what are you talking about? I'm just getting an oil change. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So I only sold one car out of the service drive before I gave up. And I tried it for months and months and months, but I was going back there with no training. I was going back there thinking they were a fresh up. Yeah. You, you need to provide some value when you go back there. Otherwise they want you to get out of their face. They want to go back to their angry birds or their flappy bird. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can see, you can tell I'm dated. Cause that was like 2012. I was, I was going to say, bro, you got a galaxy S2. <laughs> the 23 is out right now or something. Oh, that's so funny. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You say that, but, but um, so that so you, when you go back to the service drive, you have to have value. Otherwise, they want you to get away. Now, what kind of value do you think a salesperson could bring to a, a guy waiting for his car to get worked on? Let's say he's getting an oil change. He's going to be there for 40 minutes. What do you think a salesperson could bring value? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to mind is find a way to help them pass the time. Um, so take them out. Um, show them some rigs or maybe even just bring them some snacks and some water. We really good on snacks at my job. So, you know, I don't know. Um, but that, and I do struggle with that. That's kind of, you know, I've thought about, I have these little brochures that I've made. I've thought about walking up nice and slow and being like, Hey, uh, I don't want to like push you, but if you wanted to check out some new models or something, I'm here to help. Um, but all of that, I do really well when something makes sense or is natural I don't do really well um, when it seems barbaric or forced. Forced is yeah. a good is a good uh, way to put it. Yeah, um, that's probably why I'm a very honest car salesman. I legitimately don't try to convince people that I don't smell the cigarette smoke in the car. I'll tell them before we open the door. I'm a very transparent person good. because I like to make stuff make sense both for me and for them. And then it works. Um, so when I walk up and I feel like nonsense, what I say is going to sound like nonsense and uh, no one likes to be embarrassed. And that's a, that's an embarrassing situation. Yeah. The forced word is probably the best word. Cause 
when you go back there, it's it's almost like you're treating them like an up. You're trying to make a sale. So you hit the the nail on the head when you said bring them a water or snacks. Okay. And you're a brand specialist, right? You you're not right. a salesman going back there. You're a guy that is, hey, I'm, I'm part of the dealership. I have a few different roles. One of them is selling cars, and one of them is is making sure our customers, no matter what department they're in, is feels at home. Okay, I brought you a water and and whatever. Okay, right. my name's Frank Frank Beard. I kind of do multiple roles. H- have you ever said that that you do multiple things at a dealership? I have not. No, I've never heard that. Which is why all of this is so great because it's actually okay. new stuff. Okay, so so. When I first got in the car business, I was 20 years old, and uh, one of the salesmen told me, hey, I need, I need you to help me close this deal, Kyle. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? He's like, go in there and say you're a manager and close them. I'm like, I can say I'm a manager? And the manager goes, you can say whatever you want. This is a car business. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I'm like, all I right. Do, I do tell people I'm a credit specialist. <laughs> right, so... So when you say you're a credit specialist, what is that? Does that they go, oh, okay, can you help me? Yeah. Can you help me get approved? Yeah. Okay. So when I went in that that office, I felt like a my manager said I can say I'm a manager. My name's Kyle, I'm a manager. I, dude, I had pimples still. <laughs> I had my my <laughs> I could barely grow two whiskers for a for a, a beard. <laughs> I, I still can't actually grow one, but I went in there with confidence and helped them close the deal. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you, now don't say you're a manager. I stopped doing that a long time ago because I'm not, <laughs> and I don't want to lie, but I am a brand specialist and I do like checking on people to make sure they're doing okay. Okay. And when you say, Hey, I do, I have a couple different roles here. I always got to check on my service. People make sure they're okay. Let me get you a water. Actually, here's a water. And I also have a, a title of a car salesman. I actually get to sell cars and, and tell people about the new products and just ask them. You yeah. want to hear about the new Honda stuff? Are you a Honda fan? Yeah. Right? I'm not. Yeah. I'm. Here's the best way to, to shut them down. I'm not trying to sell you a thing. Right. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm literally helping you pass the time. And I wanted to bring you water because I this is part of my job. Right. Okay, I check on people. Just, I got I got a really cool role here. Okay. Yeah. Now you back you back door to conversation about what what Honda do you drive? Da, da 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 Have you seen the new da 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 da? The new right. It's my favorite. And you can kind of backdoor and you get away from the awkward like. So uh, you get an oil change? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can get away from that. So try it next time. It, are you going to be rusty at first? Yeah, because you never done it. Right. But think about the multi-role person. Okay. Like for instance, people that work at the Apple store, they can sell you an Apple. They can show you how it works the UI, the whole system, they can even fix yeah. it. So is that guy just a salesperson that sells phones? No, he does three different job roles. I, I'm a salesman. I train on how to use the, the whole uh, system, the uh, oh, oh, iOS, and I can also fix it. If a screen cracks, I can replace it. So that's Frank. I, can, I sell cars here, but I'm also a, a customer service relations guy. And I want to make sure you're, you're, visit here is, is going okay. Everything okay? And, and be helpful. Yeah. Bring them a value. Bring them a water. Bring them cookies. Okay? And and have a little slush fund or a cooler with some stuff in it that you can bring these people because what you're doing now is not working and what you're doing now is not even doing it. Right. So so why not try something else? Try I something got new. Okay? I got to. I, I think, got I, Go ahead. No. Well, say what you're going to say. I'm going to find my note here. I... Well, I just, um, every single time I start telling somebody that that's a gold mine and they need to be in there, as I'm uttering these words, the back of my mind's going, well, why are, why are you not doing that? That is a, that's a funnel that I check with a zero, um, three months in a row. You know, I I get one, I I probably got, um, six to 10 service customers all year. Yeah. It's just something to work on. Don't beat yourself up about it. You need to have a new angle because your current angle is not working. Okay. Right. This is your new angle. Here's the note I was looking for. Do you like fishing? I suck at it, but it's fun. Okay. So I'm not the greatest fisherman too, but let's say me and you went fishing together, Frank, and we're sitting there on the dock. 
and I'm looking over and we got a Corona or whatever. And I'm looking at the fish and I got my pole right here. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to cast today, Frank. Let's see how many fish I catch. Yeah. And you're going to look at me and say, what are you going to say to me? Yeah. yeah, that's a good analogy. I like it. But, you're yeah, like, you ain't catching nothing. You ain't catching nothing, Kyle. Yeah. And then, and then, and then you turn to me, Kyle, I ain't going to cast either. <laughs> how many you think I'm going to catch? I'm going to be like, dude, you're not going to catch nothing, Frank. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Right? Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so so if you don't cast in the service drive, you can't catch anything. Now, are you going to get a no, a no, a no, an awkward no, and then what? Possibly a yes. You're going to yeah. get more no's than yeses in the service drive because people want to get in and get out. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is you're – you're a customer relations specialist at the dealership slash brand specialist. And I'm checking on you. Here's a water. Here's my card, et cetera. Right. Yeah. You're going to go through that stuff and, and you're just going to be a guy that could possibly help them and strike yeah. up a conversation. You're there to strike a conversation about whatever, not to try to sell a car. You can't sell a car back there. You just can't. They're there for yeah. a different reason, but you can strike up a conversation and they say, well, I'll tell you what, when my car gets done with the oil change, can I get it appraised? Absolutely. Come on up. Yeah, There's yeah. my car. Right? I'll tell you what. I'll go get your car and bring it up there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Go, yeah. go meet me in the showroom. Come look at some stuff. So that's how you got to work the service drive. Hit it at a different angle, okay? All right. That makes sense? That makes sense. Now, if it feels awkward, you're doing something right. So when you go back there tomorrow or the next day, Frank, and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do it. You're doing it right. That's a, that's yeah. literally every time. But I'm usually still on my desk. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but it's okay to feel awkward and stuff because the only thing you can do is, is, is get a zero out of it. Well, guess what? You had a zero before you started. You didn't lose 100%. nothing. The only thing you could gain is experience and get better at service driving, get better and better and better. You just got to go do it. And and if you get shut down five times, okay, I'll try again tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Just keep trying. If you don't cast, you can't catch the fish. Just remember That's that. Fine. Okay. Uh, the final, well, you got two more, but we'll kind of lump them together. Walking a lot and taking ups. What do you I mean, mean by it, that? Um. Well, when I first started, I think just like with everybody else, you take ups, uh, you, you, um, and if you're hungry, you take a lot of ups and you, and if you're not, and you know, you just burn it through ups you, and, and, uh, you know, 18, 19 ups to sell 22 cars, you know, cause you got nothing really else. You got your homie who sends you a buddy and, you know, mom comes through when you first start. Right. So everything in the very beginning, all I was doing was taking ups. Um, and then when I started was in March. So I had a heyday through the summer, taking a whole heck of a lot of ups, selling 24 cars a month. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then I got to this point where I got terrified of what was coming with winter. Um, I was saying winter is coming like Game of Thrones because, and I just kept beating that mantra into my head <laughs> because I had gotten used to this, this very high level of income um, and I did not want to give it up and uh, and everybody else was running around scared because hey winter's coming it's not gonna be like this and I saw it I mean I saw I mean I, I couldn't picture it for the life of me a packed lot on a snowy day uh, with a bunch of people just want to walk around and see what's up um, or sitting out there freezing either one of them didn't sound appealing so I started diving in and finding ways to get my own customers um and i'll give you i'll tell you right now i'm at 18 well i closed this month at 18 and a half cars and um and two were closed ups so and last month um it was 20 some odd cars and about four were closed lot ups and I track, I track everything. Um, I think the most that I did recently was in like July with like eight or nine. And so if I take my funnels and when I, when I do the math with my funnels to get to my goal, which is a solid 26 to 30 cars a month, period, like that's the usual to get to my goal. Um, I can't be closing out a month with two ups. And so, um, I, when I, 
really when I thought about what we would be training on, um, I just wanted to point out the things that, that I, the only thing I could do was point out the things to you where I know I'm lacking. And um, yeah, I've got to find some way to catch a balance. Um, and, and those, those ups are really, really important. And now I just got an office today and, um, and that's going to make it even more difficult. Cause when I first started, I chose the desk that was literally eight feet from the door. Okay. That, and, 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 and I had four or five people that were like, when I'm out of there, they're in there because they saw people walk right up to me and they're just like, I just need a car. Right. So I'm, it's more important than ever. I'm kind of glad you saved it for last because now I'm going to be in an office and walking that lot and getting those ups. Um, I used to think it was a big flex that I could sell 24 cars and only take four or five ups, but I feel like it's massive missed opportunities. Well, <clears throat> your, your percentage of sales that are not ups versus ups is incredible right? For a guy that's been in the business two years. So you're doing a great job marketing yourself. Obviously that's one of your strengths. You said it was, and yeah. you only, you only have so much time in a day. So what you need to really figure out is when can you take ups? Is, right. is there a certain point that, so just think about like this last month, for instance, do you see that when there was opportunities to take an up? Um, yeah. And actually this, just this last like five days I implemented of a new habit to try and help with it where I'm doing my uh, CTI calls, which I don't know if you use the same terminology, but it's basically just recorded calls so we can tell how many calls are going out in the day. We all have a little bit of a load together to try and um, keep that number high for the dealership overall. So I'm supposed to do 20 of these a day um, to do my part. And um, so I've started sitting out in a warming up car doing it from my phone instead of my computer, which I used to do it from the computer um, with an AirPod in. And I did, I took more ups. I took a few more ups. I didn't actually close them. And this was a new implementation, but um, back to your question, did I have time to do it? And the answer is probably a resounding yes. It's just, um, I did not organizing my day to where I acknowledge that that's the time that I have. And I'm guilty of going down a rabbit hole on my phone and stuff, just like anybody else. So, yeah. So you mentioned something when you, <clears throat> when you first started, you're just taking ups. Right. What happens, what happens to a new, new guy is there's a few things that happen, but one of the biggest things is when you're brand new, you don't have any, uh, any relationship with your coworkers. Right. All you have is relationship with customers. So right. where I, where I see a lot of salesmen fail or fall short is, those first few months, they're killing it because they don't care about the gossip. They don't care about who's dating who in the back room. And they, they haven't built a, a relationship to get in a huddle yet. Yeah. So th that's why a lot of new guys come out of the gate because their manager said, go out and take an up. That's all they know to do. And then they start getting smarter and like, oh, well, I can take ups and BS at the same time. Okay. Yeah. You turn your back and this guy gets the up. Yeah. And so, and so what you do, what salesmen do over time is, they start going into a different route of how I can make sales without putting in the, like the, the pavement pounding, man. It's tiring. When you went home brand new, you were beat. Right. You remember those, those first couple months, new shoes every month. Dude, you, <laughs> cause you were on a lot like a, like a madman. Cause that's yeah. all you knew how to make car deals. Then you right. got smart. You got some huddles and whatnot, but, but it sounds like you didn't get in the huddles or you, you weren't bad. I hated it. the huddles. I learned that quick. And in fact, um, I started using break the huddle right after one of your podcast episodes, but I used to go, I don't know if you've ever seen mean girls, but I'd get on the golf cart. And if more than one person mobbed up next to me, I'd be like, you can't sit with us. And I would just, uh, <laughs> I would bolt off on the golf cart and, and it was, it, it was funny, but I did it every single time. Um, yeah. because I never, I was never in the huddle. I, I saw the, no. uh, the ridiculousness of that really quick in, in the, um, yeah. It, it's useless, so that's, but... that, that's good so the huddle pays how much an hour yeah nothing nothing, nothing. good good job st being a, being aware of that uh, so the reason why i asked you do you see times in your day that you can take it because i'm not there watching you right okay? this is something that you have to decide in my head okay i, I got my calls done i got an appointment at three it's one o'clock what should i do with my next two hours i sent my 20 text messages that kyle said to do 
Yeah. Okay, that that could be the opportunity to not go grab a, a giant burrito and go into a food coma or a big old yeah. burrito or a burger and spend the yeah. next hour and a half waiting for your 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 that's a time to get something quick bite to eat, get on the floor for that, and then your up arrive and then your appointment arrives, and then you turn that fresh up and you get the yeah. half deal there, and then you finish your one car appointment. That's a bizarre thing that you just said because I've never thought about it like that. And I, what I mean is I've literally never thought about getting it up, getting them landed, flipping them when I have an appointment coming in. My brain, my squirrel brain, um, there's my hours. That's it right there. If I've got an appointment coming in at 2 and I finish my calls at 10, between 10 and 2, I am hanging out. You know, There it is, man. And, and yeah, and it, and that's I mean that's huge. So to think that I could just marry up with somebody if I find a, I don't like half deals. Um, even though I've definitely made some money, um, having five or six of them in a month getting turned, but I'm not used to turning. So that was um, probably a huge takeaway from this for me is the idea of grabbing someone and turning them and then moving on to my appointments or what I had lined up in the day. Uh, that one's definitely going in the memory. Yeah. So, um, so that, come on, man. So 1.5 cars instead of the one. Yeah, and all you yeah. had to do was go take it up. If, so what I used to do on the floor, Frank, is if I knew I had an appointment at two, I would go find any up I could until that, yeah. until that moment. Because <laughs> I knew, I oh, knew man. I could get someone else working for me on the half. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to get my whole. That's something. That's something. I like that. One and a half units. He gets to do the work for me. That other salesperson gets to do work for me. I'm the CEO now. I'm yeah. the boss. It's not how I thought on the floor. I was always very generous on the floor and I help people out for free. I help close deals for free, but I still had the CEO brain of, I'm going to grab it up before my appointment arrives. That's your moment. Okay. Yeah. That's don't great. eat a giant, don't eat a giant lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a habit? I mean, I have a horrible habit of, well, first of all, I have a very generous GM and, uh, and you know, we got burgers coming in the door all day. So it is very easy to eat a heavy lunch, um, to my wife and I's dismay because I, I, you know, the retail weight I got, um, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, and then sometimes I don't eat at all because, you know, you know, doing True. three cocktails in a day, but. But yeah, I get, I see what you're saying. I, I will tell you this. I don't leave the lot. I mean, I think anybody that's, uh, I, I do from time to time, but it's always when I'm paying my bosses back or paying it forward because they, you know, they, they're constantly yeah. throwing their card out for us. So I'll do the run so that I don't look like I'm above that. But when I first started, yeah, I would leave the lot. And in fact, anybody watching this that's new, I would highly suggest you get over that habit real quick. If you just came from a retail job where they had you on lockdown and then you come to this job and then you start leaving a lot because you've got this freedom Bro, I'm telling you, when they give you that card and you go for $80 meal for everybody and you come back and it's two and a half hours later, it hurts so damn bad to look around the lot or the, the showroom floor and everybody else got a deal and all you got is some burgers for people. So I did learn that lesson quick. I do not leave the yeah. lot. That's one thing I can say, Kyle, is if I got a moment, I'm still on the lot. Like, yeah. um, and, and even when I say that I'm messing around, I don't get caught up too much in talking yeah. to people, you know what I mean? But, but I'm definitely, um, I'm not using my time to get out on the lot that I know that I could be uh, in that time frame. And also I've never, I, I, what you just said, I don't know how it's like, it just created a new neuron up in there because <laughs> I've never thought, I literally think I don't like multitasking. I don't got enough time for this. I got this person's coming through any in, in, in an hour or two. I need to be prepped and ready for this. I have not thought about, well, get out on that corner over there, hold it down, try and take a good up and get them landing on the car, have my appointment, wait just five minutes for me to get back from the test drive and hand that off to somebody that's mind blowing to me right now. 1.5 units that day. Oh. And now you, now you take 250 units to 300 by those random halves that you turn over to somebody. A hundred percent. That I mean, that's, that's awesome, man. Years. Okay. Um, the last thing you put, and we'll keep this real short because we're over an hour. But skipping the steps of the sale, uh, I'm going to ask you a few things. Okay. Would you? Uh, let's. Do you like to barbecue, Frank? 
Yes. Okay. So let's say you you got all your friends over for a barbecue. Okay. And you got the charcoal in there and you, you slab the meat on it, but you never light the fire. You skip the step of lighting the fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've done that. <laughs> but you see where that's going, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. And it's Everyone's a great much metaphor. Everyone's sitting at the table and you throw down raw meat. Oh, well, I, I felt like I was going to speed up the process and, and to get to the get to dinner faster. No, you ruined dinner. Okay, here's another one. Building a bike. You ever built your kids a bike? Uh, uh, yes, unfortunately. Okay. Hey, hey, little one. Um, I didn't put the handlebars on, but, you know, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Skipping the step. And the fa- the last one, I left this last one to make us laugh before we, we call it a, a show here. What about skipping the steps of making a baby? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, where's the fun in that, dude? <laughs> like you, and you can't skip them. If you want to make a baby, yeah. there's certain steps you have to take. If That's you want to sell a car, you have to go through the steps. It's yeah. all part of the show. And don't do the steps without the customer seeing. Make sure they're with you throughout the steps. Yeah. Salesmen will do this a lot. Oh, yeah, I think that vehicle's in stock. Let me go grab it. Dude, you missed the, you missed the most important part of walking a lot with your customer, building some friendship and rapport, walking to get the car and pulling it out together. Yeah. Like, you can't skip those steps. You think, oh, I'm going to pull the car up and it'll be quicker and the customer's going to like me more. But you miss such a crucial step of, Walking with the customer, looking, is that it right there? No, that's the different blue. Dang it, my eyes are bad. Oh, oh is that it? Yeah, that's that's it. Hey, will you will you guide me when I back up, Mr. Customer? Okay. And he's like this. <laughs> right? I'm right. That, that, that customer gets to feel <clears throat> important and part of the process. And you get to show off that you're working for them. So the skipping the steps is not just like let me speed it up for you don't try to speed them up take them through the process because um you have to put on the show barnum and bailey remember that that circus yeah. man they're the greatest show on earth for a reason because they make the crowd feel special and important and, and include them who here yeah. wants a free shirt yeah. right the crowd's involved if yeah. you just got a shirt at the at the front of the counter and and they gave you the same shirt but it didn't get shot out of a cannon You'd be like, yeah. oh, this shirt's stupid. It's a Barnum Bailey elephant shirt. It's dumb. Yeah. But if that sucker got shot out of a cannon and you caught it, oh, yeah, it would be the, you, I don't want no one having that shirt. <laughs> yeah. Part of the show, man. Yeah. All right. You got anything for me, Frank? Sorry, I went over a little, an hour, but I feel like no, we're in the zone here. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. Um, I, I mean, and it's funny, I, I, what I'll say to anybody who, is is listening and watching or maybe even on the fence about doing this with you is um especially i'm speaking to my people who are high high performers um i was skeptical kyle of um what i could be taught oh i'm so great right what could i could be taught and there is a ton of takeaways from this not only are there a ton but i will listen to this multiple times to refresh myself on the things and i mean something as simple as what we had just spoke on of me taking and turning somebody and then moving to my appointment, little things like that. I've literally never heard that proposed that way. So um, it, it, it's no matter how good you think you are, you can be better and uh, you can learn something new. Man, I appreciate it, Frank. I, I only ask one favor and you share anything that I put out with anybody that you can share it with that's caring to listen because my goal still is to be the number one car sales training podcast on the planet. The, the podcast just turned two years old and it's heard yeah. in like 68 countries. Uh, I'm, I'm oh, not, you're doing I'm great. Not all, I'm not the all knowing guy, man, but I'm just, I'm literally from my heart trying to help people like you get better in the car business because it makes me feel good to when Frank's eyes go, Whoa, I can do that. That yeah, that's yeah. worth it to me. And I appreciate, uh, you, I appreciate you hiring me spending your money that you got right on, on yeah. this, this, and I'm glad I could reciprocate the, the information to you and make it worth your while. Hey, you do got some reach too. I'm going to tell you, I've had now two, not one, but two newbies um, come up. I, every now and then in the meeting, I'll just tell people, Hey, you should be listening to podcasts or whatever. But these guys, I hadn't said anything to them and they came up to me and they go, Hey Frank, and they play it because uh, one of the first episodes uh, you mentioned me, and they they are like starstruck, bro. 
they're like, man, because they know I'm good in the dealership. And then they're just like, dude, you're on the podcast I was listening to because they're new and they wanted to reach out. Yeah. They did this on their own accord and they're finding you. So that's pretty cool, man. I hope it continues hey. to grow and be huge. And then uh, when we hit the 300 cars, maybe we should do something else. Hey, I'll, I, I promise I'll come see you. All right, brother. Awesome, Frank. Hey, thanks for the uh, the uh, time with you, and we'll talk later. I look forward to seeing your career continue to skyrocket. I'll stay in touch, man. All right, bud. See ya. See ya.